What's going on, everyone? So, the Philadelphia 76ers have given Joel Embiid a new uh, extension. So, uh, 76ers giving Joel Embiid $193 million. Joel agrees to a three-year max extension deal, uh, which includes $301 million guaranteed over the next five years. So, obviously, this was inevitable, right? Sixers were always going to give him the money. Like, this isn't a shocker. This isn't really a surprise. Um, you know, he is the face of Philadelphia. He is their best player. He's one of the best players in the league. You know, he was going to get this money regardless. But Philly is pretty much all in, right? I mean, obviously, Joel Embiid, obviously Tyrese Maxey. But now you got the big three uh, with Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Paul George. And this is a team that, you know, it's championship or bust. It really is. I mean, it's been that for years. But Philly has just been this team that's plagued with not being able to get over the hump. Right, they're this team that has been plagued with just not being able to get out of the, the second round. And Paul George is kind of that perfect complimentary piece, right? Because on any given night, on any given moment, he can just take over and just, I mean, he can put it in with the best of them, right? Um, also, his defensive versatility, his size. Right? I mean, he's a guy that can do everything, right? Like Paul George, you know, the, the underrated tag, right? Gets thrown around a lot. But Paul George, for the type of player he is and skill set, I do think he is underrated. I do think he is one of those players that, that doesn't get talked about enough. Now, part of that is his fault. Part of that is his lack of success. Part of that is also just his injury history. Um, but, I mean, even the, the beginning of the injury history wasn't necessarily his fault. It was kind of this just fluke incident, right? And then, you know, his his him being able to kind of get over that and continue to be a, a star in this league and be, you know, just such a versatile forward. I mean, he is a, an excellent player overall, but also now he doesn't have to be the guy in Philly, right? He can be essentially the third guy, second guy on any given night, but he also can be the number one guy for Philly. You know, if Joel Embiid's having a rough game or Tyrese Maxey just doesn't have it fallen, Boom, you got a guy in Paul George who can step up and just kind of play whatever role is asked of him in that versatility. But, you know, Philly stacked, right? Like, obviously, you, 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 you're you going to have probably a bit of a learning curve. You're going to have a bit of an adjustment period, right? Because, you know, Paul George recently just played with, you know, James Harden and Kawhi Leonard, right? So he's not, he's already kind of a, a bit accustomed to, to playing with, two other stars and stuff like that. So I don't think it'll be a huge adjustment, but, you know, it's still Paul George, is, you know, 1A at worst, the, the two, and now he's going to most likely the third option. I'm sure it'll be a little bit of adjustment for Paul George, but might be good for Paul George, right? Because it take, it'll take so much pressure off of George and what he has to do on a regular basis, right? He can kind of just focus on what he needs to focus on. Um, you know, I still think, obviously, it depends on how well Paul George, Maxi, and Joel Embiid uh, play together. Um, I still think that they're the third best team in the Eastern Conference. I still would put Boston over them. I'd still put um, the Knicks over them if the Knicks are healthy and good. Obviously, there's health concerns about Boston. There's health concerns about Philly also. Um, but I think, like, all things equal, everybody healthy. Um, I would personally put the Celtics as well as the Knicks ahead of the Sixers. But I don't think the Sixers are, like, insanely far off. Like, I don't think it's like, like, last year it was, like, Boston and then, like, a gap. And then it was, like, the Knicks and teams like that. Like, I think this year it is, like, it's Boston, you know, if they're healthy and good to go, a smaller gap. And then I think, like, the Knicks and the Sixers are, are right there in that conversation. Um, you know, beyond that, I personally, I don't really have much faith in anyone else in the Eastern Conference besides those three teams. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, the the Bucks. I'm not really sold on, if I'm being honest. Uh, Pacers, again, not really sold on, um, you know, Cavs, Magic, right? Like, I, I think that, you know, could one of those teams end up in a conference final? Sure, right? You saw the Pacers last year end up in a conference finals, right? So, like, I don't think it's, like, you know, that far-fetched to think that, you know, Philly, look, even could be that team that ends up 
being a second round exit again, right? I mean, sometimes you just see teams that just, for whatever reason, doesn't matter how much talent they have, doesn't matter how good the team is, they just, whatever reason, just can't get over the hump for one reason or another, right? Um, you know, you, you have your your two foundation pieces now in Maxi, who's your, you know your young up and coming star, like the guy that is is going to be the the face of the franchise more likely than not at some point when Joel Embiid. Um, rides off into the sunset because look Joel Embiid he's only getting older he doesn't have the best injury history and I mean that's obviously a, a real concern with the Sixers period is just their injury history but Joel Embiid like you look at him and it's like oh he's 30 years old right he won't be 31 till March but given his history he might as well be 33 34 right like I, I don't know how many years Joel Embiid has of like true like greatness you know, I mean, I would love, I hope, you know, he can play till he's 35, 36. But, like, what level is Joel Embiid at at that point? You know, how healthy is he at that point, right? But, you know, this is a team that that they have those expectations to be, you know, one of the top teams in the league. And they got good depth. They got good versatility, right? This team should be a very good basketball team. And I do think that this team is going to be very hard to beat. And, like, you know, look at Boston last year, right? Like, Every year, Boston's in the conference finals, right? Or they're in the NBA finals. And every year, they just couldn't get over the hump. It's just like, you know, you start hearing all the talks. Like, oh, is Tatum the guy? Is this? And then last year, they were able to finally get over it, right? And that was with Chris Stapps Porzingis injured pretty much the entire playoffs, right? And, you know, it was just Drew Holiday and then, you know, getting Derek White the year before, right? They just made the right moves. Um, got the right pieces around Tatum and, and Brown, and they were able to pull it off, right? They were able to win an NBA championship and very well could win it again this year, right? Like, they they should be the favorites once again to win the NBA championship. But the Sixers are going to do everything they can to, to kind of have a say in that field, to have a say in that department. And, you know, it's just sometimes it just takes that one time, right? Like, you know, you get the ball to kind of fall your way a couple times. You know, you think back to, like, the Raptors – series what was that 2019 I think it was um you know where where Kawhi hits that shot if he doesn't hit that shot very different outcome right like and so it just again sometimes you just you just need things to kind of fall your way sometimes you just need the ball to to bounce in the rim for you or bounce out in the (laughs) in the Kawhi situation sometimes you just need you know the right matchups Right, all of a sudden you look up, Philly's in the conference finals, you get a couple things to go your way, you steal a game or two, and all of a sudden you're in the NBA finals. And you know, I do think Philly matches up really well with everyone, um, all these teams in the league. Again, Joel Embiid is, is a handful and a monster in and of himself. And then you add in um, you know, what Paul George can do. Obviously, there's playoff concerns about Paul George at times. Right? He's either playoff P or pandemic P, right? It's like th- there's just this no real in between, but Everything falls on Joel Embiid. No, I mean, Joel Embiid also has a history in the playoffs where he just, he completely disappears, right? Like, he has times in the the playoffs where he just, he can't stay healthy, right? You need Joel Embiid to be healthy. Not only do you need Joel Embiid to be healthy, but you need him to be the the best player and the leader on this team, right? I do think Paul George and Tyrese Maxey will be able to kind of offset some of that. But, you know, you go as far as as your best player takes you. You know, and so you need to see Joel Embiid step up in the playoffs, in the big moments, you know, with with the the bright lights on. You need to see him be able to to be that that dominant force, arguably, if not best player in the league, right? I mean, he even had his struggles in in, uh, the Olympics, right? There was a lot of talks of like, man, this guy, should this guy even play, right? He was so bad. He had that, that bounce back game, but outside of that, he wasn't great, like, he wasn't the, the Joel Embiid that we thought he'd be. I mean, Bam and especially Anthony Davis were better overall at, throughout the throughout the Olympics. Especially Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis looked like he like. Why is Joel Embiid starting over AD? I mean, that was a question by everybody, right? Like it was just clear that one one is clearly better than the other right now. And you know, obviously, there's. You no, know, dealing with injuries, coming back, all this. So there is the the built-in excuse, but still, it's just like 
At what point do you stop? Does the excuses stop? And it's like you got to just step up. You got to be the guy. You got your bag. You got your money, right? You got a team. You've, he's had several teams that were cap- more than capable of winning a championship. He just hasn't been able to get there, right? Is this the year that they finally get there? It's very possible. We'll find out. But you know, w- w- it's going to be very interesting to see how this season plays out. How well you know Philly's kind of big three mesh, um, and if they're able to actually pull out a championship. We'll see. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, are you excited for uh, Joel Embiid and the Sixers this year? What do you think of his new contract extension? Um, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. Helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.